Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and another podcast. Today we begin a new study in 2 Timothy. Today we're in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, which reads, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears, I long to see you, so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded, now lives in you also. That's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. When the Apostle Paul wrote, wrote this second letter to Timothy, his situation had changed drastically. The Apostle was now a prisoner in, a, in Rome and was facing certain death. However, Paul's concern was for Timothy. As in his first letter to Timothy, Paul encouraged him to remain faithful to the one who died for him. This second letter was probably written about four or five years after 1 Timothy was written. In verse 1, we read, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. Although Paul's own circumstances were difficult, he was granted a really big view of God. My friends, this is the way it works. We gain a big view of God at the expense of the trouble that we go through in this life. I've found that my most profound observations about the Lord and life have come into my purview through the hardest moments. Like Paul, I am discovering that whatever happens in my life, I am in his hands and I have no reason to fear. This is possibly, this is possible because like Paul, I have the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. Now everybody, everywhere, has a hunger for this kind of life. Nobody wants meaninglessness or emptiness. We all want to experience excitement and to feel alive. This is what makes us vulnerable to the appeals of the world, which constantly reminds us that we only go through once and we must grab it while we can. The problem with the world's proposition, it doesn't come near to delivering what it promises. I find it amazing how desperate we are for this world's lies. In verse 2, we read, To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. This verse literally reads, Timothy, my dearly beloved son, This greeting is much stronger than the one the apostle gave in his first letter to Timothy, which was, Timothy, my own son in the faith. It is not that Paul loved Timothy less when he wrote his first letter. Paul's ability to love increased, and that increased, and that increase parallels the depths he had gone through with the Lord Jesus. As Paul's life drew to a close, he realized a deeper way, in a deeper way, how dear the Lord Jesus was to him. And when the Lord Jesus becomes more dear to us, those that are most dear to him become more dear to us. 65-year-old Paul wished grace mercy and peace upon 35-year-old Timothy. Grace is God's undeserved favor given to rebellious at heart sinners 
to free us from sin, enabling us to live a life from eternity's view. Mercy is God's undeserved compassion in freeing us from the misery that our sin created. And peace is the heart tranquility and settled relationship with God that results from grace and mercy. It is God's grace that covers our sin, his mercy that overrules our misery, and it is his peace that guides us through this distracting world. In verse 3, we read, I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Paul was in prison in Rome. And he had a lot of time on his hands to pray. This is usually the way it works. We experience isolation like imprisonment, hospitalization, or retirement in order to get to the most important thing. If we lack the wisdom to see God's design in this, we will not pray. But when we embrace him through it, we become a player in the cosmic battle which rages. Knowing that he would die soon, Paul factors in most greatly in the advancement of the gospel in the hearts of people through prayer. Incarcerated in that dark dungeon crowded with criminals facing an unjust execution, Paul thinks about Timothy. Sweet memories flood his heart no complaints, no bitterness, no anger, no vengeance. He writes, night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Prayer. Prayer is the cornerstone of the Christian life because it acknowledges God's presence in our lives. It also recognize, recognizes our utter dependency upon our Father in heaven. Prayer is the cry of a beloved child to his faithful father. Frequently, it is the cry of a lost child who does not know his way, who is lost in the dark woods with strange and frightening noises. The child may cry out to be led to an open road or to be home safe in bed or at least see, to see a light in the distance so he can know his way. Yet, this prayer is not always answered that way. For God is our Father, and as the Lord Jesus once said, He knows already what we have need of before we pray. In verse 4, we read, Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Sometimes our tears are necessary. It is often our tears or the cause of them that we are made more ardent in prayer through which we gain an angle that enables us to see the heart of God for us better. This is when joy is often heightened in our lives. In fact, Nehemiah reminds us the most during the most stressful time of his life that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God's joy comes most often into our lives through our tears. In verse 5, we read, I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Timothy had a sincere faith, the type of faith that was authentic and believable. He had this sincere faith because his mother and grandmother had seen to it that he was taught the scriptures. Integral to the development of our faith is our consumption of the word of God. Augustine said it well when he said, the holy scriptures are our letters from home. I like that. Prayer and the word of God go hand in hand framing up a better understanding of our calling in the sin-sick world. Tim Keller says that prayer is helplessness accepted and given to God. 
Prayer is connecting with God Almighty, who is faithful to make his word come alive to us in a way that is eternal, exciting, and impactful. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day. Thank you.